Hey guys, it's Nice Clips, and I am back with another Degrassi commentary video. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video where I reacted to you guys' Degrassi opinions, and for one of those opinions, I went a little bit into how I do not like Sean and Emma together, and how Sean and Ellie was the better couple. I asked you guys if you'd like a full video about Sean and Ellie, and a lot of you guys wanted it. It's gonna be so bad. We are going to start from the beginning of the Sully relationship, really diving deep into the dynamic and also comparing it to Sima to get to the ultimate point of why I think Sully was the better couple. So without further ado, let's get started. So from what I've seen, Sean and Emma or Sima is one of the most shipped, one of the most popular and loved couples on the show. However, this is a wave that I never really rode as a Degrassi fan. Nothing about this relationship ever really drew me in as I was watching and I feel like fans like this relationship just because we kind of saw them grow up together. Like they started dating when they were very young and then we got to see them rekindle that relationship once they were more grown up. But y'all really expect me to ship it just because they dated when they were 12. No, I'm not going to. I'm not convinced. <gasps> and i was expecting to get like a ton of backlash when i first expressed that opinion on this channel but to my surprise a lot of you guys agree with me on it a good majority of my viewers seem to also believe that Sally was the superior couple so i am here today as our representative and i'm gonna back us up so let's get into the beginning of the Sally relationship sean and ellie first start to talk in this season three episode titled take on me this episode was supposed to be kind of a spoof of the breakfast club and i really liked it some people say they don't like this episode which i find very peculiar because i thought it was such a cute episode not only just because of sean and ellie but because of how much we got to explore the relationship between that set of unlikely characters and the way it was such a perfect blend of simplicity lightheartedness serious topics and nice relationships and also let's talk about how this was one of the only episodes besides that heritage episode that kind of developed hazel's character so yeah when when Sean and Ellie began to talk, when I watched this episode for the first time, I just remember having this feeling like, wait a minute, what is going on here? Because these are two characters that I would have never predicted to be talking to one another. And I immediately loved it because they were just very different, but also very similar. Like they were both very misunderstood and kind of outcasted. And I just immediately loved the dynamic and I couldn't wait to see what they were going to do with them in that episode. So when they first started talking, they're both really into the conversation. They're both really hitting some deep topics and really trusting each other with their personal information. And even though it's going really well, the relationship at first turns out to be a little bit fake because we find out Ellie is trying to get this information out of him for a story about the thefts going on around the school, which is why Sean is in detention. However, Ellie ends up really liking him and really valuing the time that they spent together in detention. And this scene on the rooftop is one of the most pure scenes between a couple on this entire show. Neither of them is scared or freaked out by the other despite their respective flaws. Ellie doesn't judge Sean for the things he's done. She just hears him out. She empathizes with him. Ellie shows Sean the cuts on her arm expecting him to be freaked out but he's not and they're just able to so easily confide in each other and it's so adorable. Please tell me when and what episode where Sean and Emma had that much substance in that much depth. So fast forward to the end of Take On Me. Ellie apologizes for recording him. They get together and it just gets even more adorable from there. They're vibing with each other. It's cute. It's funny. I remember there being a little storyline about Marco being a third wheel and they're just really healthy and happy with each other. A little scene comparison that always comes to mind when I think about how cute and happy they were with each other. I always remember this one scene from season six when Ellie was dating Jesse and Jesse tells page that Ellie hated dancing. Ellie hated dancing. <laughs> well, explain this because Ellie used to love dancing with Sean. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. You could just really see how they brought out those different personalities within each other and it was just so sweet. On the other hand, throughout Sean and Emma's relationship, there was always so much anger and drama. Emma being mad and judgmental like always and trying to change something about Sean. And honestly, vice versa from Sean to Emma, like they just didn't fit together. Emma was too much of a dramatic princess to really empathize with Sean and everything he was going through, nor was Sean ever able to empathize with Emma and whatever she was dealing with. 
with, with Snake having cancer and things like that. But with Sean and Ellie, it was always just easier for them to understand each other and fit their problems and personalities with one another. Ellie was always there for Sean and supportive of him despite what he had done and was really there for him while he was trying to right his wrongs with Simpson and vice versa, Sean was always there for Ellie. Ellie's mom was an alcoholic and did not provide a very safe home environment for her, so Sean even let her stay with him. Like, please come on and tell me that this episode, Anywhere I Lay My Head, where Ellie moves in with Sean, was not one of the cutest episodes in the entire show. Move in with someone who loves you. However, things do start to take a turn once the shooting happens. As we know, Sean was the one who tried to stop Rick, but the gun ended up accidentally going off and killing Rick. Sean was obviously not able to cope with that very well, and though Ellie tried her best to really be there and get Sean to talk about his feelings, he just wasn't able to let anyone in. Eventually, he does confide in his parents, and this is when he realizes he needs to stay, ultimately breaking up with Ellie. Ellie's obviously very upset but Sean even expresses how much he loves her and really tries to end things on a good note. There is a lot of unfinished love and romance between them. Him and Emma had already packed things up well before this. So why did Sean not come back for Ellie? But before we jump into Sean's season six return, let's take a pit stop at season five. Season five rolls around, Sean is gone, and they've pretty much ruined Ellie's character from this point on. She has such a pick me girl crush on Craig, and this is just the beginning of a long series of Ellie chasing guys who constantly choose other women over her. Really, because I thought being constantly rejected by guys would mess you up, Ellie. <laughs> that up. She ate that. She so season six is really where they could have revamped her character and continued that plot with Sean. But no, when Sean makes his return, for some odd reason, he is all eyes on Emma, even though Emma has a boyfriend and doesn't really give a single sugar honey iced tea about Sean. She constantly chooses and believes Peter's lying self over Sean and doesn't really have much respect for either of them. He planted those drugs in my locker. I asked him and he said he didn't do that. And even though Sean and Ellie had such an epic romance, and our epic romance over voicemail, this is what Sean says. Forget Ellie. <laughs> what? Forget Ellie? Okay, fine. Forget Ellie. Go back to Emma. But trust me, Sean, you will F around and find out. As you can see, the more you fuck around, the more you're gonna find out. Sean ends up beefing with Emma's boyfriend, gets into a ton of drama, tries to one-up Peter and impress Emma, which ultimately results in him going to jail. It's just a complete mess. Sean shouldn't have even had to go through any of that to get Emma back, but since Emma has no respect for him and doesn't really love him or else she would have dropped Peter for him, he does end up having to break his back and go through all of that just to be with her. So he ends up going to jail, but he eventually gets out once Emma finally decides to do something and help him. Sean also ends up beefing with Jay over the whole ravine bracelet situation that happened while Sean was away. I'm sorry, I was imagining it belongs to Sean, who found out about me and Jay from Jay. This just didn't make any sense to me. Like, girl, why are you mad at Sean? Just because he found out, like, shouldn't you be mad at Jay for telling him? Anyways, him and Jay get into it, and it's just super upsetting, honestly, because after all that progress he had made, after he moved away, it was all just ruined because he was just falling back into old patterns, old drama that he had spent the whole year trying to erase. So the fact that he still got back with Emma after all that red flag behavior that she showed is just beyond me and it just ended up in cheating anyways how you get him is how you lose him emma cheated on peter with sean so then she cheated on sean with damien if sean had come back for ellie he could have had a nice healthy relationship with her while she was at college he could have continued working at jay's shop or no he could have started his own shop because i do remember he wanted to start his own shop called cameron's custom cars like he would literally carry the blueprints around with him everywhere this man had a dream and he was not able to fulfill it because 
of Emma's drama. He could have started his shop, finished his year up at Degrassi, and then gone off to college alongside Ellie. And Ellie wouldn't have had to embarrass herself over Craig or Jesse because they were both trash and treated her like trash. So they were both just better off with each other. And I'm not saying that if Sean and Ellie had gotten back together, everything would have been perfect and rainbows because no relationship is like that. But I am perfectly confident that the writers could have come up with a Sully drama storyline that was just as interesting as the Sema one in season six. Maybe we still could have like incorporated Jesse in there and there would have been some type of big drama between him and Sean. I don't know. Anything with Sally would have been a better outcome than what happened with Sema or Crelly. So yeah, that is my take on this topic. Sally forever. Some people may think that they were boring, but that's exactly how I like my couples on TV shows. I like it nice, simple, and boring because that's how you can tell that they're healthy. When it comes to individual characters, yes, give me drama, give me toxicity. That's why Craig is my favorite character. But when it comes to couples, I like it nice, boring, and healthy. One of my next videos is probably going to be my favorite Degrassi couples, so be on the lookout for that. But thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know what you guys think of Selly versus Sima, and I will catch you guys in my next video.